Thanks for joining us for this edition of Blue Jay Journal TV. We are produced by the Washington High School TV production class. Jared and I are your hosts for today. In this episode, we will take a look at the immunization debate. We will also visit with our cheerleaders and jaywalkers about their seasons. Those stories and much more are coming up. Blue Jay Journal TV starts right now. Some people believe immunizations are the best health development we have ever seen. While others feel immunizations are an unnecessary risk. Both sides of the debate have strong points. John Amlong has more in our top story. 91% of U.S. school-aged children are vaccinated. However, there is a rising number of Americans who choose not to vaccinate. My parents wanted to just kind of educate themselves and make sure they were making the right decision with vaccinations. If you're vaccinated, and you're supposed to be immune, it shouldn't affect you if I decide not to vaccinate. While parents can choose not to vaccinate their children, most physicians strongly urge otherwise. Vaccines save lives. They take a small little piece, what they call antigen, it's a small protein that elicits immune response from our immune system, and that gets injected into the body. If that disease ever comes inside you, it'll recognize that one little protein again and be able to fight off the disease without you even knowing that it became into your body. There are a number of vaccinations that children in the public school system are required to obtain upon enrollment. However, for those who feel strongly against this, there is a way to abstain from this rule. I have to check the religious exemption box. You shouldn't be able to check a box, yes I vaccinate, or no I did not vaccinate for religious reasons. It should be that everybody's educating. While this option is a possibility, Julianne Matt warns against false information factoring into the decision. What we can do is understand their opinions and understand where they're coming from, why they're not vaccinating, what stories they're reading, where they're getting their information from, but then also give them the scientific information and the numbers and that vaccines are safe. The people who are researching um, into the negative aspects of vaccines don't have a motivation of money like the people who are pro-vaccination because like most of the people who are going to fight really hard for vaccinations to be legal or enforced or you know approved are going to be people who are going to make bank off of vaccinations. It's been considered to have vaccinations be legally a necessity, but it's not enforced that you eat well, that you're exercising, or that you're getting enough sleep at night. I think it's pretty ridiculous. Whether or not you choose to vaccinate your children, it is crucial to educate yourself on the issue using credible sources and talk to your doctor about what option works best for your family. For Blue Jay Journal TV, I am Jonathan Amlong reporting. Both cheerleaders and jaywalkers have experienced success this school year. Tess Marquardt takes a look at all the hard work both teams have put into their seasons. This year, both the jaywalkers dance team and varsity cheer team competed in nationals at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. For Disney, I think we had to fundraise about like $20,000. We did some dine to donates, car washes, bake sales, trivia night, oh, we did a hog raffle. We, we pretty much got our, met our goal by like October or November of this year. The Jaywalkers started learning their dance routines over the summer and put in countless hours of practice for competition. They competed with two routines, Palm and Kick. We practiced three times a week, once on Sunday night and then two times in the morning on Tuesday and Thursday. We added a few extra practices and basically we just ran through the dance over and over again to be able to do it once, like full out with a ton of energy. To go to nationals, we have to go to camp during the summer, which is like three days long and it's at SEMO. They give you like a, either a blue, white, or a red ribbon. And then if your team has a certain percentage of blue ribbons, then you get accepted to nationals. The Jaywalkers were in the 4A kick and palm division. Each dance was up against over 30 other teams. 
The routines were judged based on synchronization, technique, and also choreography. Waiting behind the curtain to go on, you could hear all the other teams being announced and their music playing and just knowing that you were next and you were up, that was definitely very nerve-wracking. I thought we did good for our team. We improved both of our scores and our dances and we didn't move on, but that was okay because we went there for the experience of it, just to like see all these other great teams and like what we want to push ourselves to be. After returning from nationals, the dance team finished off their season on February 25th at the state competition, where they placed first in Division 4A kick, third in POM, and also won the academic award for overall highest GPA in Division 4, with a team average of 3.9. The WHS varsity cheer team went through a similar process to prepare for nationals. First had to do a competition on December 5th in Kansas City. It was a UCA qualifier, so once we competed at that competition, they said that we qualified to go to nationals. We put a lot of time in to make sure that we're prepared for competition and that everything looks good before we go out and perform. The last time our cheerleaders went to nationals was back in 2014. Because of this, there was a lot of pressure for the girls who qualified this year. This one was a lot bigger, like state was really big, but nationals, there were like hundreds of teams that were competing, so it was really kind of intimidating. I think the hardest part was just like having the strength to go out there and like do the routine one more time. It was nice knowing that was our last time doing it, but it was just like really hard to push through and do a good job. Cheerleader Jaden Hine felt like national competition was not as stressful as one would think. Pressure to place and do well wasn't as expected, I guess, just because we were competing in a category with 25 other teams and only two of them advanced. So I think we were really just trying to do a good job with the routine and just give it our all no matter what place we got. The cheer and dance teams have both experienced success this season. We wish them the best in the future. For Blue Jay Journal TV, this is Tess Marquardt reporting. Remember kids, your research papers due at the end of this hour. This is a plagiarized essay. You're getting expelled and your academic reputation is ruined. Why would you do that to yourself? It was just a mistake. Plagiarism is not a mistake. In our technology-driven society, many people feel we are losing the basic skills that not only benefit our lives, but also provide stress relief. Jaden Hine recently sat down with somebody who values those skills. There are some things that you just can't learn from Google or in a classroom. Sewing and cooking holds a special tradition in many families. My mom had six kids and so she did a lot of sewing mainly for the kids when we were all younger. She even made our coats and stuff, and it was always something interesting to watch. And the kids all like to see what I'm making, and they've all attempted their times at the sewing machine. I've showed some of the grandkids how to sew. With the fast pace of life, it's hard to find people who truly value cooking a homemade meal or sewing as a hobby, despite their healthy benefits. It's, it's a wonderful pastime. You don't have to sit and watch TV. It gets your mind on to other things. You know, you don't sit and dwell on things. Sewing and cooking have been a big part of Nikki's life. Having the grandkids come over and they'd watch and help bake. And there's several recipes of things that I make that my girls will call me and ask for. Sewing and cooking have not only brought lifelong memories to Nikki and her family, but pure enjoyment too. I used to have cookie monsters here all the time, and I don't have them here anymore except for myself, and I'm, I like to bake. It's one of the things I really love doing. If you are looking for a rewarding pastime or are interested in learning a valuable trade, consider cooking or sewing as a hobby. For Blue Jay Journal TV, I am Jaden Hine reporting. We want to thank you for watching and we hope you'll catch us next time. More Blue Jay Journal TV is on the way this spring. Make sure to catch us online at www.bluejayjournal.com. Have a great day!